warm welcome to a new exciting episode of Tech Unveiled. Did you know that today we can reach downlink throughput of up to 4 gigabit per second? That's an amazing 27 times higher speed than 10 years ago. In this episode, we will unveil why carrier aggregation is a game changer when it comes to increasing network capacity and maximize spectral efficiency. I'm Liana, and I will be your guide to unveil this topic. Now, let's go meet our carrier aggregation experts. So, with me here in the studio today, I have Amarit Kaur hey, and Bjorn Karlberg. Welcome to Tech Unveiled. Thank you. Thanks a lot. So, Amarit, uh, could you maybe start with explaining to us what is carrier aggregation? Yes, so carrier aggregation is when we combine two or more blocks of spectrum for higher peak rate or for increased cell coverage. And each block of spectrum is what we call a component carrier. And when we aggregate these component carriers, one is a primary cell and the other component carriers are secondary cells. When we have carrier aggregation in the network, the primary cell carries the data and control channels, and one or more secondary cells can be added to further increase the data rate. And this could be to get higher uplink data or higher downlink data or both. And this concept of carrier aggregation originated a few years ago during LTE Advanced when 3GPP introduced it for the first time. And carrier aggregation was so successful that it has now become an industry standard also for 5G. Great, so now we know what it is, but what does it enable? So Bjorn, can you give some examples of carrier aggregation use cases in 5G? Yeah, actually, let me give you two examples. Yeah, sounds good. So uh, the first one is higher peak rates mm -hmm. uh, with carrier aggregation in 5G, and that's the most obvious one. The second one is uh, really to be able to extend the coverage by using carrier aggregation coverage boost. So if we take the first example, uh, and what can it mean for us as consumers? What benefit does it give us as consumers? Say that you're downloading an episode of your favorite TV series to watch, let's say, during your daily commute. Mm -hmm. A 45 to 60 minute episode is approximately one gigabyte of data. And with millimeter wave carrier where we aggregate spectrum on frequencies above 24 gigahertz, it would only take you 1.9 seconds to download the full episode. I mean, that is, that is really fast. So thanks to 5G and carrier aggregation, no matter what you're watching, in just a few seconds, you'll, you will have hours worth of entertainment for your commute. Now, for the second example, with carrier aggregation, we can aggregate low band layers and mid band layers to extend the coverage of the mid band layer. And in field results from various customer deployments, we have seen up to 60% mid-band coverage extension gain um, compared to dual connectivity. And for us as consumers, this means that we can enjoy higher data speeds for a greater part of our commute, for example. That sounds great. So, Amarit, you mentioned that uh, carrier aggregation was first uh, introduced in 4G. Now we are, of course, rolling out 5G. So, what would you say are the main differences be between carrier aggregation in 4G versus in 5G? That's a very important question, Lena. So, in 4G, the frequency ranges span from 600 megahertz to 3.8 gigahertz. In 5G, we have access to a brand new range of high band spectrum with frequencies greater than 24 gigahertz. This is a completely new range of spectrum with some very unique aspects for which we also need to support carrier aggregation. So not only do we have a new range of spectrum for carrier aggregation in 5G, we also have different characteristics of the existing frequency bands. To elaborate on that a bit more, in 4G, all frequency bands, FTD and TDD, have a subcarrier spacing of 15 kilohertz and a slot length of one milliseconds. In 5G, we have the low band FTD spectrum with numerology zero, a subcarrier spacing of 15 kilohertz and a slot length of one milliseconds, exactly like LTE. But then we also have the mid band TDD spectrum with numerology one, subcarrier spacing of 30 kilohertz and a slot length of 0.5 milliseconds. 
And last but not the least, we have the high band spectrum with numerology three, subcarrier spacing of 120 kilohertz and a slot length of 0.125 milliseconds. So what happens when we have all these different bands with different slot lengths and numerologies? It means that an innovative solution is needed to have carrier aggregation between these bands that could have different slot lengths. In addition to that, in 5G, we also have different deployment options like standalone and non-standalone for which we need to support carrier aggregation. Also, we have an increased number of RAN compute hardware and configurations at 5G for which we also need to support carrier aggregation. So as you can imagine, it becomes a very exciting challenge to develop carrier aggregation in 5G. Yeah, I agree. Sounds like quite a challenge there. But uh, then Bjorn, what are the features and solutions that Ericsson can offer to support in this area? So actually, Ericsson has a long tradition of developing carrier functionality, uh, starting way back in 4G. And our innovative carrier uh, solution has helped service providers to achieve aggregation of many different band combinations with high level of deployment flexibility. And today, Ericsson offers 5G carrier feature support for HCC component carrier high band downlink carrier 2CC high band <coughs> uplink irrigation, 2CC mid band downlink irrigation, 3CC low band uh, downlink irrigation, and 2CC uh, low band plus mid band downlink irrigation for that coverage extension uh, boost. So we provide full deployment flexibility for all these different features. And on top of that, we also provide flexibility of, of uh, deploying these across different sites and basebands. That's quite impressive. So of course, that makes me wonder, what's the magic behind? What do you say, Amarit? Yes, so this is where advanced RAN coordination plays a very important role. Advanced RAN coordination is an Ericsson innovation that provides a low latency interface used to connect two RAN compute products. And this allows service providers the flexibility of deploying the spectrum on the same baseband or across different basebands, on the same geographical site or across different sites while still being able to have carrier aggregation in all these scenarios. In addition to that, advanced RAN coordination also solves the challenges that come from having to support carrier aggregation in 5G between different numerologies and bands with different slot lengths. So we can say that advanced RAN coordination is a key enabler in 5G to support inter-numerology carrier aggregation and inter-baseband carrier aggregation. So it sounds like this advanced RAN coordination is very useful in our carrier aggregation solutions for our purpose-built platforms. But what about Cloud RAN? We will also support carrier aggregation in Cloud RAN. The first feature we will support is 2CC downlink carrier aggregation with the low band FDD on the Cloud RAN platform as the primary cell and the mid-band TDD on the purpose-built platform as a secondary cell. And the goal with this feature is to provide a coverage boost similar to what we have in purpose-built platforms, as Bjorn also mentioned earlier. To support this inter-platform carrier aggregation, we will again leverage our advanced RAN coordination framework. And this really shows the true potential and scalability of this innovative interface. We have all the in-depth knowledge, experience, and proven field results in carrier aggregation from purpose-built platforms. And we're looking forward to repeating the success in Cloud Run as well. So exciting times ahead. So Bjorn, any final remarks from you? Yes, I would like to re-emphasize that in the carrier area, we have a wide portfolio. We support carrier in deployment scenarios like standalone and non-standalone. We support carrier in tran interband. We support carrier in tran inter ran compute. And we support carrier on our purpose-built hardware, as well as in the future on cloud RAN. And we believe in the benefits of carrier not only since it provides higher peak rates, but also since it can enable coverage extension gains through carrier with coverage boost. And 
we have the knowledge and expertise of developing care irrigation, and we will bring all of that know-how and experience in our continued care irrigation journey. Sounds fantastic. So thank you Björn and thank you Amarit for sharing your expertise with us here today. And thank you all for watching. And next time you download your favorite TV series or why not the Tech Unveiled episode, then think about how fast it is thanks to, uh, to our 5G carrier aggregation with coverage boost. If you want to learn more about this topic, I would, can warmly recommend you to read our blog. You find it together with previous episodes of Tech Unveiled on ericsson.com slash techunveiled. And I really hope to see you back soon for new exciting Tech Unveiled episodes. Until then, take care, stay safe and bye for now. <laughs>